Hey, Flats Class YouTube, it's Christmas time, and I'm in a really bad mood. You know why? Because tailing redfish suck. They just do. I was out the other day with a longtime client, Steve Stanley. Him and I have been friends for, I don't know, probably more than 15 years. And we had slicked out bluebird conditions. In your head, you're thinking, well, crush them. But we didn't. We did not. We struggled, and we struggled, and we, well, go watch. Oh, but before you go watch, remember, this is December. In December, I have a raffle going on on my website, CaptainCARichardson.com. You could be a guest on Flats Class YouTube if you win this raffle. What do you have to do? All you have to do is buy something at CaptainCARichardson.com this month from December 1 to December 24th. That's Christmas Eve. And you can get a phone call from me after we pick the winner on Christmas morning. And then you'll be in one of these videos. But go see, well, go painfully watch what we had to endure, Steve and I. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. Folks, I don't want to ricochet somebody into them. You're still pointing at them. Head looks like it's going to the right. Right, he's left of that little piece of stick up grass. He's on this side of it now. That little piece of grass, right there. Oh. <laughs> the sun is so bright, man. They probably saw that shadow. It probably looked like a softball coming in. He's wary. Be patient. Doesn't see it. Don't rush it. Gosh. Be a little bit behind him. Sometimes it's good to just watch him go by and get a little distance and cast. Right there, easy. Easy. Ah, you did not like high noon. You're right in there. Yeah. All you need to do is stick up one more time. There he is. Bring it back. You're headed right to us. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Keep reeling slow. Come on, baby. Man, they're tough today. I mean tough. Good cast. God dog it. Right on the line. A pulling platform back here. He's about 40 feet away, 30 feet away now. Drop it. Reel it back. Wait. Reel it back. Just reel slow. Okay, he just wiggled. 
wiggle, wiggle. Ah, turned. Almost feels the reeling too, you know? You almost gotta be really careful the way you reel it back. Man. Yeah, that sky there, there's one right in front of you at 12 o'clock. Point your right a little left. Right, right, go right, right there. Oh, you're gonna be behind him a little bit. He's got his nose into the tide a little bit. I'm looking for him. The right cast. We had a nice, we had a nice little line up there too. You know, it's always nice when the line is nice and clean like that. Yeah. Communication between the platform and the bow means a lot. I'm going to put the micro down. And he and he's not like one of those fish that's a gigantic fish. I'll get down real easy and then I'll get, take care of him. All those tailors and we had to just get a little bit of man, That's a nice fish too. better than I thought he was. Ooh. Wow. Fat. Gold rush. <laughs> we'll keep that bait in his mouth. I'll get a quick pick. Wow, it's gorgeous. Well, in moments like this, you just shake your head. Conditions, well, they were ideal on the surface, if you will, when you look at it. Oh, we had the perfect skies to see fish. We had crystal clear water. It was shallow where they were tailing. We had a lot of things going for us. But I think it's those things that ultimately did us in on those sucky, sucky, tailing redfish. I mean, sucky. Ugh. And I was stuck. I couldn't do anything. It was like there wasn't enough water to make a run anywhere. I mean, I literally rode it out in a big bowl so that we would definitely have a shot at catching those tailing fish. And the plan B was I was going to have to really pull, 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 pull to get try to get into the creeks, which you saw I eventually did. We followed that same wad of mullet that was mulling around outside, we followed them back into the creeks and well, you saw, we finally got one. There's more coming, trust me. But I wanna show you this gear. I'm not gonna show you the tailing gear. He's a great caster. We were putting it right in there. And we're gonna talk about what we caught that one on, we just showed you and then what we catch the rest of them on. So this is a setup I use for a lot of my clientele that to me is a pretty solid deal. And that's the Talavera inshore rod. Now this is the seven foot medium fast. It has a really nice tip on it. Gives you a little bit more backbone. You'll see a lot of videos I do with the GLF rod. This one, I like a little bit more, especially when you're gonna catch redfish. So we followed that water back up inside those creeks and the mullet came in there with us and we still had tailors for a little while, but eventually we found some deeper pockets where they were a little easier to catch. Now, other than the Talavera inshore rod, I've got, this is a 3000 HG. This is the Ultegra, which is a really nice reel for the money. You're talking about a reel that's probably, I'm guessing around 150, 160 bucks. They did a really nice job with it. I've got it packed with eight pound Power Pro. Uh, so it allows for a nice long cast. Again, I have 20 pound Seaguar Gold. I've got like four feet of it on here and I connected it, let me see right here with a modified Albright. It's a very strong, strong knot, and it's small. And then on the business end, this is a, a, something I like to use a lot. 
This is a little two aught, one eighth of an ounce, if you will, chin locks hook from Z-Man, okay? And I, this is a three inch minnows. I like this little gold rush color because it looks like the little finger mullet or mud minnows in the back country. So that's why we throw it a lot. But there's a number of other colors you could use. It's mostly about the tempo and the speed that you're working this at to really catch the fish. It's not as important, the color in my opinion. The weedless nature of this, where he can throw it tight to roots if there's floating grass in there, which there was a lot because the water was flooding into those creeks and all this grass was on the surface coming in. You have to use what you can use and this was it. It was light, it lands soft when he could sight fish and he could catch fish as you'll see here. I'll be back, don't worry. Go on, watch, watch Steve finally get even and I'll tell you how it happened later. Looks like a uh, Steve Whitlock painting right here. Now if we can just find that tailor that he likes to paint in the painting. More or less just following these fish in with the mullet. Yeah. Well, they all know we're here. Yeah. <laughs> you won't need to be able to cast here. There's nothing. Whoa. So shallow. So shallow. There. Yeah, I knew it'd come out pretty quick because it didn't look like it was that far. Yep, he doesn't know. Uh, I saw that one in the air because see the sun's behind you and it lights that bait up. Kind of shades that bait on the way down. Man, that was a stud. Sometimes it's it's such an advantage to have that sun behind you, Steve. But sometimes when the bait gets between the sun and them, they see it. I was, I was gonna say we don't get one in here. Liking that sea breeze, man. For the viewing audience, if you wonder why my footwear changed, it's because I've had to get out of the boat several times to push this thing back into this stuff, which is super shallow. In reality, it's because you had to get out and kick me and catch a dang fish. Uh, nice. Well, and that completes your slam with the trout and the mm -hmm. redfish. All right, let me do a little dental dentistry and then I'll get red it's digging hard digging like a red I'm, the water's got me real good here i'm going to spin us real fast thanks for the rallying for me here all right i'm going to put this down you just hang on in there be careful that micro is a little forgiving when it stops, but it, it will stop you on this rock. All right, I'm gonna hop. I can get this guy. You can get that guy? Yeah, you can get all the guys if you like. Nah. You can, you can probably just grab the line on that. Oh, Don't yeah. worry about that rod. That's a, that rod is a solid rod, much stronger than you think it is. And, and the kind of release we love. Don't you, I could do it. You get it, get him all the way up here and then, boom, he's gone. Yep. That's fine. 
Um, and that, that way the audience has no idea. You know, that was about, a, what do you think, 28, 29 inch red? <laughs> <laughs> He was a rookie. We're going to micro down. Keep your balance. You're going to spin us, maybe. This thing is running. Yep. No, you got you got one of the ones I thought you'd get. You are redeeming yourself. Yeah. Are we going to have to start the motor? No, we're not. <laughs> I'll switch boots on and go chase it <laughs> Oh, man. I'll tell you what, boy, that is a beautiful sound. It is. That is a beautiful sound. Backcountry blues, dude. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Backcountry blues band. Leads, lead singer, Red. Fish burn. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Kind of glad you had the stick to catch that one. Yep. This is Sierra gonna be. We need. We need. We needed a well, fish like that. Yeah. Man. Gorgeous. Nope, I'm going to take care of this one. I'm just going to put down the brakes right now, make sure we don't float off too far. Oh, and the rod doesn't move. You can you can never pull back on them. Yeah, when Ooh. Yeah. In fact, I, I'm even going to. I'm even going to pull out the Stowmaster on this one. That's a good one. Yeah. We're spinning, that's why. Reel down on him. There you go. Reel down on him again. That's a, that one there matters. Yeah. <laughs> that one there matters. And again, we went back. I mean, the two biggest ones we caught today were on that color. Yes, you're right. You're yeah. right. But we could throw it in here because the water's deep enough. And yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. You're right in that corner. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Look at the broom on that thing. Man. That's a good one. Yes, it is. See ya. Let's get a quick pick and then I'll get a good release shot. That one, whoa, that one looks great. Fighting like a... Category that most dumbasses. <laughs> yeah. uh, yep, it's a schnook. Another one. Okay. Need a CA knot. Yeah, I have to retie that a little bit. And right where it was supposed to be, right on this side of that cut. They calm down, don't they? Yeah. Almost like a catatonic state. He just shut out this side. He shot under the boat, went out this way. <laughs> Work that mullet. <laughs> what we got? It's where the fish have been all day. They've been there all day. We've never left them. From the time we started catching tailors to the, or trying to catch tailors, I should say, to the end of the day here, it is 
and all about this mullet. Ooh, like that. I mean, it's thick right here. He got even. And you know why he got even? No. It wasn't because all of a sudden he was casting better, because he was casting just as good at 8 o'clock in the morning as he was at 4.30 in the afternoon. That had nothing to do with it. Steve's a great caster. In fact, he's part of a little guide group that I'm in with Captain Steve Thomas, Captain Dave Dinker, and the like, where we share Steve, fish Steve everywhere. And we all know Steve's a damn good angler and a great caster had nothing to do with that. A couple of things changed. One, as you saw, I got back into the creeks. Once I get in the creeks, water was still skinny, but following that mullet in there, as I moved through those skinny creeks and we got a few more shots at Taylor's, there are deeper little pockets where those mullet pool up and kind of just, you know, float around, hop around, make a lot of ambient noise which makes it easier to catch those fish, especially the snook. As time went on, we also got closer to the salooner. It was a major salooner between 2.30 and 4.30, and that's when we did the most damage was during that feeding activity, that lunar period, really helped us a ton. Saved the day, in fact, in my opinion. It's just little things like that sometimes that changes the day. Being vigilant and, and doing your due diligence to try to provide a great experience and never giving up, that helps a lot too. I think we picked the right baits. I think we did the right thing. And in the end, it paid off. If you like what you're learning here on Flats Class YouTube, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. Tell your fishing buddies about this channel. We get millions of views on this channel, honestly, but we don't get enough subscribers. So I want you to subscribe and tell everyone else to do it too. And some of the cool equipment that you see, you'll see Yeti products on here, Shimano products, Busby fishing boxes and things like that, that you might not be able to find at your local retailer. Just go to sodiumusa.com. We've got everything right there. And if you've seen it here, you can buy it there. All right, it's time for me to uh, get back in the shop, get some more tackle together and well, start another YouTube video. Until next time, Captain CA signing off. And don't forget about my Christmas raffle. It could be you on the bow of the boat next time.